Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special episode lined up tonight. It's a we, guest episode, which means it's not our fault, especially this time if it's bad. Yeah, it's actually the fault of our guests. Uh, this is 30 Minute Worlds, as you know, a podcast where we make a fictional setting in 30 minutes or more. Uh, we have, as our esteemed guest here, Junius P. Wright, a man who has inspired all of us to achieve and do great things in life. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought you were going to say something bad. <laughs> uh, so we got all that out in the pre-show, actually. Is, we, <laughs> so it's yep. Junius Paul Wright the third, as a reminder oh, to right. you three fellows. So you should remember that. We'll be and posting his of, coat of arms in the description. That's right, uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much for inviting me on the show. This is a, quite an honor, and it's good to see that all three of you fellows have grown up to nice, strapping young men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, even more. Do you want me to do is it time for my introduction to yeah, say yeah, what I do Mr. and all that? Uh, Junius Wright, you know, tell us what it is you do and how it connects to world building. Huh. So 15 years ago, I was teaching sophomore English at the Academic Magnet High School mm -hmm. and uh, had a creative writing class, um, did some joint projects with uh, the Halsey Institute here at the College of Charleston. And um, this artist came in, his name was Demetrius, and he did this crazy installations with uh, plaques where he would tell a story about Chimerosphere and Chimerica through these plaques that were um, posted in different points throughout the world, actually. And um, I decided yeah, I'd try to bring this in. Go ahead. Yeah, I went to see the one in uh, Barcelona, I think. Of course. Oh, cool. Uh, cool. Yeah, it's like this, uh, this center of the moon or something. It's got... Uh, keep going, sorry. Well, no, and it was... Every, play, every uh, marker was interesting because it would tell... Uh, another piece of the story about this world that um, was parallel to ours. And it was yeah, like overlaid different. onto our world. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it was over in that area right there. Uh, you know, Akira would uh, bring gifts to the people in the prison. And so you could look over that, that, that uh, hill that was over there and it would tell a story and build a story around that hill. And it was, um, it was quite, it was, and it was a big stretch because this guy, I remember when we, um, I don't know if y'all were there, but he was talking to one of my classes and then he just he would never break character. So we would ask the students, mm -hmm. do, you, do you know the Chimera Sphere, Chimerican um, National Anthem? And of course, okay. no one knew what he was talking about. And then he would just burst into song with this right. weird anthem <laughs> that he had made up. <laughs> and, but I but I did see something in it. I was like, oh, OK, there's something there. And if we could, um, if I could take my students and um, at the time the school were located, the Academic Magnet was on an old naval base that had been shut down. And there's all these ruins around the, when they had pulled out. And I said, we could build our own parallel world on this, you know, the grounds of the old naval base and uh, students in creative writing could write their stories and base it on you know different landmarks that are out there and that's and the three-dimensional so stories project right three-dimensional uh, story mm. projects yeah so that's, that's what cool. y'all did and um and uh, some many of the generations of high schoolers slaved away on this project <laughs> and for what <laughs> for what like <legacy? laughs> with my, my benefit and my enjoyment of the, yeah. the canon that i'm adding to <laughs> <laughs> Look um, upon my works, ye wiki it, space <laughs> editor, and beware. <laughs> it did. I don't. I don't know if y'all saw like the city paper did a whole spread on it. I think yeah, this I was after y'all left. And the mm -hmm. guy, so they actually had Photoshop pictures in there of the cult of Poseidon that y'all had come up with. That was people worship the cult of Poseidon, and they oh, actually yeah. did this big picture that was photoshopped of all these people worshiping this big you know, cold, you know, Poseidon statue. And so I remember I was up at the offices, um, talking to one of the writers, um, and the, one of the guys came out of the back room was like, Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all did the 3DSP project. I did that, that, that picture with the cold of Poseidon. I just wanted to, yeah, that was awesome. And so you have, there was fans out there. So there, it was all worth something to some people. You build a great world there. Yeah. 
what was so neat about the 3DSP too was that it was collaborative world building on a scale right that was right. citywide like the entire city of Charleston and anyone who was interested in it could contribute in their own way yes. it was a really cool vision that you had that you kind of brought together and yeah. as a kid I think in high school it was probably the coolest thing I was a part of definitely and I think back on it often pretty fondly <laughs> Yeah, I think at any time, um, I always think back in my own high school career is like, I remember pretty much nothing. So it's like anytime someone remembers anything, you know, I was like, I think that's pretty good. But um, but yeah, y'all were pretty influential in this, though, because um, you were the first year and then we were titans of yeah, the yeah, industry. Yeah. <laughs> and there's but it's interesting, like now when I'm relaunching the project, there's stuff in there that um, that y'all created. So like I know with um, with well, call Dan out. It's like Dan was the mm. only one that was not in the right. You yeah. were in the creative area. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, but um, you were there in spirit. And then yeah, but I know yeah, Zach yeah. with uh, the tunnels, mm-hmm. there's people that built whole stories that just go on and on. You would be amazed at like the depth oh. they've gone to that and how many really? children were wow. smuggled through the tunnels from the uh, finishing school and many bad admiral- admirals, you know, we're doing all kinds of various things with free fever. Remember free fever was the, when that, the, the oh, fever yeah. y'all came up with and it, it was, was like spelled, a chemical spill or something. Yeah, yeah. It was free, but it was spelled <laughs> F R I E or something like that. Yeah. And it stuck like, a, you know, I don't know. Some of y'all were pretty insistent about like, okay, well, that's what it is. Mr. Right. I was like, okay, it's we'll, branded. we'll call it that. It yeah. <laughs> it was a, the, you branded and that was it. And then, um, definitely Tom Longlegs is like, uh, I love telling the story where I was out, uh, taking my brother we're walking around looking at the project and I was like pointing things out. And this couple was walking a dog that came up and they're like, Oh, do you, do you know about Tom Longlegs? And I was like, no, tell me about Tom Longlegs. And they told the whole story of Tom Longlegs and they were so excited so about funny. like telling me that. And huh. they, um, they couldn't, so that was the goal though, is to get the general public to come in and be a part of that world. So, you know, it was great. Yeah. Well, you know, and in, in a, in a realm where, you know, every high school English class or creative writing class, just explicating passages or using like a basic yeah. prompt, it's pretty cool to do something outside the box mm-hmm. like that. Oh, I mean, even definitely. your normal English classes involved like a lot of cool visualization of space projects and stuff like that, which was way mm-hmm. more interesting than annotating <laughs> passages <laughs> out of books. It was yeah. just a way to trick you into annotating. So, uh, yeah, I, think I, think I did all six out of ten yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the whole. Did experience. I get y'all to draw stuff, and then I have y'all yeah, like sketching We're actually going to get you to draw upon your vast reserves. <laughs> sound That's a of good segue. Creativity. Yeah, you yeah, to I, I'm just I, I got to rein him in. Yeah, just for yeah, please. Yeah. I spent thirty more minutes talking about this dumb. <laughs> We love you, but yeah, this this week you are our uh, geographer at large. You're the Lord. Uh, nice, nice. Uh, Lord I got it. And it being good. someone, obviously, you know, Mr. Wright, who's intimately familiar with the workings of this podcast. Yes, uh, big fan. We don't Long have to explain fan. it to you, but we will explain it to the listener. You're going to build a fantasy world with our help using three random words. You have absolute creative control. If you don't like an idea, you can say no to it. You can be like, I don't see how that fits in here. You can drive the conversation to any point that you want, as long as it's not related to 3DSP. You can get up and leave. <laughs> and get, I can get up and leave at any point. At any point. <laughs> yeah, he's gone, and, guys. and to be right. clear, he's gone, I'm, getting, like, I'm getting a drink for this. So that's he's like getting my, a drink. Okay. My, yeah, my, we didn't I, say I have anything, to plug then. in. I'm about to lose power. I'm plugging in. Nice. Oh, okay. nice. That would have listening. destroyed the entire yeah. episode. Well, uh, this, this, is is a, this is a podcast. They can't see me. So. And Walt says fantasy, but really what I mean, hey, science fiction, you know, <laughs> anything, magical realism, yeah. like whatever. We've done Just, some really bizarre ones that are yeah. frankly no. not good, but they're very fun to make. Uh, we mm-hmm. haven't done nonfiction yet and that. Uh, so I don't know about that one yet. It's just uh, Dan Carlin's hardcore history. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you're ready, Mr. Wright. I'm ready. I'm, I'm just going getting, to. Um, I'm, I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay. We're going to say off our prompt words here. Uh, Zach, do you want to go first? Okay. Yeah. For once in my life, I have a prompt you word. You do? Um, it is... Uh, okay. I I just had a flash that maybe we did this one before, but no, it's slightly different. Uh, forgotten. Forgotten. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dan, do you have a word? Yeah, the word is uh, blasphemy. 
blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Okay. My prompt word is wheel. Wow. Does it happen to be a miniature on the desk in front of you that maybe contains a wheel or we <laughs> there it is oh no yes. it is <laughs> uh, my oh, patented yeah. system the boldest source of prompt words is certainly that which only is around you at the time <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm i'm allowed to reject it do i have to give a reason why i'm rejecting something no you cannot somebody? reject any of the words you have to oh, go with the prompts okay. <laughs> of all uh, see wow this okay. is this is some liberty being taken yeah, by the <laughs> All right, uh, we gotta yeah, this you in. know, if we could reject prompt words, there'd be a lot in the history of this podcast. <laughs> yeah, actually, let me <laughs> consult the let me consult the book. I, I, I'm well, not I'll, sure. I'll accept them. I, I didn't know. I was. Yeah, gonna, I didn't know if there's a procedure here, but I, I'll accept forgotten class me and wheel. Uh huh. So, so it's, no challenge. And you know what? It's a there's a better prompt than a lot of prompts that have come. <laughs> You've got a pretty good hand there. Podcast. Wheel is pretty evocative of you know a lot of stuff you got the dharmic wheel you have the automobile yeah. the wheel of life, uh, yeah. yeah wheel of fortune wheel of fortune wheel of time not not wheel the time show. yes mm. oh yeah oh the tarot uh, oh yeah forgotten yeah. and blasphemy this is an so, alex trebek yeah. setting actually blasphemy, a game show there's obviously a religious connotation there could there be a structured church in this setting uh that's that's interesting the way that I could see to link blasphemy and forgotten, obviously, is that it could be a world that's dominated by deities that are perhaps fickle. And what is defined as blasphemous changes with time or mm. is simply forgotten over time by the people of this world. Um, although <laughs> you brought up Wheel of Fortune, Mr. Right, like like. Obviously, like the tarot, but I'm thinking of it like the game show now. Yeah, not the game <laughs> show, the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> the old, right. uh, old Wheel of Fortune. We grew up in good Christian households. We had yeah. the game show. We didn't have the, the tarot. Your conceptual. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The medieval concept of the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, even predating that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and blasphemy is a great word. It is. It is. Well, this is interesting. So how... There's a rotating cast of deities, and they kind of determine what's blasphemous and what's not. Why would that change? Is it because people are constantly... What if there's a bunch of, like, uh, 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 forgotten gods? Uh, that have passed out of sort of the pantheon of yeah, this world? Yeah, they aren't really worshipped as such mm-hmm. anymore, but there's, like, a bunch of religious laws that need to be enforced that have existed for thousands of years and go ahead i'm sorry no no dan go on all right so there's in ancient sumeria right in the ancient mesopotamian gods it was a big thing that deities would steal basically the names of one another they would if you had subsumed another god you took their name on right so Mm -hmm. what if when you inherit another god's you know domain and or followers by subsuming him you also inherit what is blasphemous to him or her. His laws. Yeah. That was a okay. big important part of like Sumeria were the laws of each god and country. Yeah. And maybe as the gods are subsumed, what was blasphemous to them is then forgotten, but it remains blasphemous under the domain of these new gods. So gods eating each other. The consuming okay. of gods. Okay. What if the gods are giant carnivorous wheels oh my god <laughs> there's that walter twist <laughs> this is not what is what you, carnivorous wheels uh what does that even mean well, have you heard of the one you know so they're uh, yeah well junius meat, what were you gonna say so, yeah i was just gonna say meat in terms of like the abstract idea of the spiritual of meat thoughts, of God that you yeah, could, okay. what if like God's that. okay, we could tie wheel into it later, but what if God's like ate each other? Uh, yeah. Mm. Hmm. And literally yeah. ate of the, ate the flesh of each other and became new gods. And this cycle has been subsisting for thousands of years. This implies too, that gods are kind of like, uh, they're kind of barbaric in a way that humans aren't. And maybe it's up to humans to keep track of their histories and laws. Maybe gods are like more bestial creatures. Or they're Uh, cannibals. Yeah, yeah. Which is blasphemous in itself. Well, we won't touch that. Uh. (laughs) 
Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, maybe. I just think it's interesting. Yeah, maybe these gods, maybe the a very idea that uh, of how these gods are like uh, eating each other is blasphemous to uh, everyone. Like everyone's forgotten that this is the reality of of how gods uh, like change hands. I guess uh, names the names of gods change hands. There's a circle of life that gods follow. There's a life cycle to a god. Mm. And it involves them eating other gods or getting eaten. There's a predator-prey relationship, and gods kind of mimic the natural world in a way that they don't in our culture here. Mm. Well, a cycle would imply that, I guess they're reborn as the new, like, syncretic deity that is created as a result of this, or... So what was the middle... What was the, the whole... Wheel of Fortune in the Middle Ages, that idea of fate and how that was involved. Because it'd be interesting in the Wheel of Fortune, the gods being subjected to that as well. Mm -hmm. That's kind of out of their hands, too. It's not something they right. have control over. Uh, there's going to be a bigger, stronger god, god and one day he's going to eat you uh, and take all your followers. So this is a, a cycle of life, an accepted thing, or is it a way for them when they consume one another to try to escape? There might be certain gods cycle. who uh -huh. have leaned fully into it because they're glutted on victories. But there might be yeah. other gods, maybe more aware gods, who are like, wait, we're trapped in this cycle of like yeah, killing yeah. each other. And they want to transcend whatever that is. That's very Buddhist in a way, actually. Yeah, you dominate your that which you conquer and you actually you literally consume. escape the wheel yeah, yeah. that yeah. eventually by essentially consuming the other deities in the system a god will be created that does break the wheel that is functionally a a, a monolatrous or a monotheistic Ooh. Uh, being well what if there's one god who's like close and he's he's close to actualizing himself he's like the, this great devourer kind of figure mm. Uh, how so would gods? Oh, go on, Mister Wright. Well, the wheel. So the wheel of fortune. I like how you still call me Mister Wright. Um, the wheel <laughs> of fortune. <laughs> the wheel of fortune is spun by, well, Fortuna or something like that, right? That's why it's called wheel of fortune. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so it's spun, and then like the different. That's what it, you know. Some people get, and it spins it at random, and like they have different fates that happen as they go through. I'm just sort of walking through like right. what that wheel of fortune is. So some people gain, some people don't, but is, are you saying that the consumption is part of that cycle or it's a way to escape that cycle that they are the wheel of fortune? I, I envisioned the wheel is more like the wheel of life and death that the gods are trapped on kind of, right. I, it's most similar to the Dharma, I guess was the concept I was going to say. Okay. Uh, but the Wheel it. of Fortune is pretty conceptually similar to that, too. It's something gods aren't normally bound to. Uh, right, right. But we're, what would gods look like yeah. in this universe? Are they constrained to kind of look like humanoid forms, or would they look more like ogre-like or bestial? I think as you consume... Hmm. Yeah. yeah as, I, what, you, what you consume, you take that on. Right. Yeah, hmm. actually, that's true. You take on... They don't have a lot of control over their forms. And I like the idea that it, the, you're taking on both negative and positive aspects of deity. Like, so Hephaestus was a cripple, right? If you consume him, I mean, you might gain his mastery over craftsmanship, right? But you probably also gain his disability at the same time. Yeah, you gain part, you, you, archetypally you're linked to him. Yeah. So if you were to eat, like, if, if a god of light eats the god of, uh, I guess, the underworld, or no, not the god of underworld, but the god of, like, monsters or monstrous beings... I think it's going to I – mean, it's shaping both of them, right? One of them is consuming mm -hmm. the other, but it's going to transform the consumer as well. Well, the god of monsters would be eating people left, right, and center because he's built for it, you know? Yeah, but then he takes on right. other – what if he oh, eats – Oh, he becomes like, less monstrous. This right, is kind of neat. Right, because mm -hmm. he, he eats another god that is going to change that and become more humble or something like that. And then right. – so where does the blasphemy fit in because that idea of – Blasphemy is like lack of respect of a god. So I but think that like mm. uh, it's up to the gods are lack busy. Of reverence, and they're like, that's different. Reverence is different. 
Yes. Yeah. Mm. I think the gods uh-huh. are busy in their like all encompassing immortal war of life or death with each other. I think it's the humans in this setting, the worshippers who codify laws uh, of the gods. And they have to keep track of which gods have assimilated which other ones, which can move kind of fast, right? It might happen pretty suddenly, and you won't get a lot of advanced warning about it until it does happen. If there are two human churches, uh, like one worshipping like Pelor and one worshipping, uh, you know, uh, Zathustra, and, you know, Zathustra eats Pelor, uh, those two churches now have to combine – and they have to be like, well, our God ate your God. So let's look. At, we'll, we'll take on some of your religious laws as a concession, you know, and you join oh. our church. So there's actually a huge administrative clerical need for a <laughs> lot of people to administrate this. But there, there's God time and, you know, the people time, human right. time. Mm. So that, I mean, right. that would spend, you know, there could be generations, especially to take on like, a long enough, you know, you have a long enough generations ago where they create these uh, forms of worship and the way how how do you establish the reverence for a god? And so they have that established because that's how the only way you can be blasphemous is you don't show reverence to that particular god. Right. So long enough for them to establish those, and then to have to shift those when that god shifts. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, if they if that's not established, then it's not a big deal for them to shift. But if it's like established the generations, then it's a huge deal for them to like go and change that. It creates, you know, all these conflicts and people questioning things. But then when they come back, they're that much more passionate and following the God. Right. Right. And the God is that much more powerful, too. It's kind of like a sports team, like or like a company that merges with another company Mm -hmm. uh, is actually a better allegory for it. Uh, And temples have to take on a merger (laughs) culture. (laughs) <laughs> oh man i can just imagine the uh like you come into work one day and they're moving out the altars it's like what's going on it's like um, we're into plinths now yeah we, <laughs> we're, into plinths. we're changing wow. you must change everything you wear so yeah. iconography um, your sacrifices out. have changed oh the, hallways have been, the calendar's changed <laughs> oh gosh we have yeah, a different calendar is- now Oh, it's oh, man. based, that, that'd it's be based very on funny. the cycle of, you know, a, a newt or something like that. No, like a, you know, a bullfrog or something like that. So we follow that. The Consider cycle the of a bullfrog. <laughs> wow. It'd be funny. <laughs> the be, life cycle or the, like, the different cycle. stages. What if, the like, different stages. So I, I don't know. Right. What if, like, in this work. world, or cicadas. Uh, there's this really new faith that's kind of an upset religion where they, they were a new, they're basically like a cult following this one like really charismatic guy who ascended, you know, to godhood in the popular imagination. And then he ate like the harvest god. He ate like some major god. We could go after Fortuna. Eh? I mean, go after the god. Oh. And now his religion has been merged into this much larger religion and spreading everywhere. And people like don't know who this guy is, basically. He's kind of the outside bet here. Yeah, he was the dark horse god and he <laughs> he ate the god of something that everyone fucking prays to, like the harvest or some shit. Uh, yeah, is he yeah. trying to wreck the wheel? Is he questioning the I wheel? I think all the gods are basically? trying to wreck the wheel because they think once you or get off. they're trying off, to take over the wheel. They want to be the only god, you know, by virtue of eating every other god. What if he, this human that ascended to godhood and then consumed the harvest deity, did so on like a sort of um, – on a utopian message basically that by consuming – the harvest deity, if you lent your worship to him, he's going to ensure basically that your country has, at the expense of other nations, plentiful harvests year round. So I he's like not that. just trying to attract converts by eating the other gods. He's trying to steal them in the mortal plane at the same time. Yeah, he's trying he to get human mortal politics plane. behind him as well. So he, yeah, because he this was is, human pretty recently. He's a pretty savvy I'm stop operator. stop y'all right now because this is, we are retreading very recently trod ground. Oh, um, with golf robots. This is this was like two two weeks ago. We did this one. We did that <laughs> specific twist that you are leading us down. Which this, this is interesting. The the one with the glass. Uh, oh oh yeah, with Olog. Okay, 
Yeah, we can't. We well, can't. Was the gatekeeper though, right? I Who just wanted the... you to be careful. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is all I'm saying. You're right. <laughs> I, I like don't that. Keep... What other gods could there be, Junius? No. Uh, what are you thinking here? What other gods could exist in this setting that are fun? I just like the outside god that comes in and is trying to wreck everything, but trying to. Mm -hmm. I mean, are the like is the appeal that is you know the generation after generation they somehow become some of them become aware of well i guess his followers were, and he would be the one that okay i'm tired of like changing our ways over these decades is like yeah we hate a recognition changing our investments yeah. every 10 years we're, we're <laughs> sick of this God, we're, yeah. we're tired of like mm, yeah. you know the next you know generation grandpa sacrificed this and now i gotta sacrifice this um and so just promising, you know, to get, to get this goes to the corporate, but, you know, to streamline things. And so we don't have to play that game anymore. You know, I'm just going to sacrifice this one thing and that's it. We'll just keep on going with that. That would be interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. They also have to but bank I, uh, on him never being eaten. Right. right. Uh, I mean, but I do, by the way, I do want him destroyed there because he's annoying. <laughs> that, takes, that takes all the fun out of all this. <laughs> I don't want everything to be mainstream, so I would like him to try, but he completely fails. Are there any gods that you... He's just one force in this world, right? And he's a pretty weak force, honestly. I mean, the Harvest yeah. God is pretty cool, but there's so many forces that work against the Harvest. Yeah. Um, yeah, all that... When you eat a god, you acquire their traditional enemies, too, like the Winter God, mm -hmm. you know, the God of Death. Yeah. Well, and that what I was thinking about, Walt, is it, are there deities that you can't eat? And I would think the one that you can't eat is the god of death. I think you can eat the god of death. I think it's hard, but uh, as a treat, I think <laughs> that like you can have a little bit of the god. No, uh, I think the only thing that's off then. limits to them oh, the is fate. Well, hang on, whatever let, that force uh, is. Uh, well, let Junius there. talk. Uh, let our guests can you talk. Stop rolling over <laughs> our lore lad, Walter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would, all I was going to weigh in is saying, was there an original God that encompassed all this that split up? So you have at one point, maybe yeah. this is a cycle where, you know, a person, a God has successfully consumed all the gods and become one God and then is split apart into very small gods. They battle out Ooh. eat and it slowly, you know, right. does a cycle like that. That's really so, interesting. So I guess then we should talk about what that god because that's sort of like that's sort of what this would be moving toward anyways like uh, if there was a god at the beginning one god at the beginning or one god at the end the the way that this work would work out is they would be the same sort of god right right somebody would have acquired all of these i think um, along traits the way and turn into that humanity would inject itself into and you'd have a lot more traits in the final incarnation mm. Mm. that weren't there in the present incarnation. First of all, like human flaws and stuff mm -hmm. would probably be manifest. Or if society destroys itself. I mean, you could have society echoing the different gods and then society mm. becomes more and more complex. And, you know, as the gods, there's more and more gods. But then when, you know, consuming and consuming, becoming more one, it's like they sort of destroy themselves. Yeah. What if there right. was something at the beginning that was called like uh the presence or whatever and it uh the god's natural instinctive desire to eat themselves is like a it's like a cellular petri dish uh kind of mentality it's like an amoeba that's been split up trying to reconstitute itself into something grander so it mm -hmm. wants to rejoin it has that urge right right and humans have that urge too but we don't understand it as we have an urge to like fight things, you know, and survive, mm -hmm. but it's not because we're all part of one organism. It's because we're looking out for ourselves and we misidentify the gods as that. That's just a little tangent I went on. Sorry. Could it also function as a virus? I mean, what if it functions as a virus? So it's replicating, Ooh. it's injecting and replicating in, mm -hmm. in that sort of that way. That's I mean, they oh, sort well, of. That's consume. actually a cool point. Huh. If the gods are eating each other, humans would be like, oh, we can eat each other too, right? The gods do it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's actually really uh, – yeah, yeah. be interesting if like – if the concept of divine right if in the shape of a monarchy in this, the succession is predicated not on, you know, being the blood heir but of consuming the old king. 
Because your your eating is divine right, quite literally. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes. Oh. The dead body, the feast. I like the big idea. Or so the live the big body. banquet table. Oh, yeah. Gosh. Oh, yes. And so the the last throws right there, and must consume the brain or something like that. The, that's you know, crazy. At the very oh. end, because oh, yeah. oh, that's yeah. the only way to pass it on. Um. Yes. And that it's the only way to get beautiful. people to recognize it is legitimate. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's rancid. So you wow. have. You have to have your observers, yeah. What if it kind of bleeds down to like minor authoritative positions in society? Like when the alderman dies, the new alderman has to eat the old <laughs> alderman just so people recognize mm. the role. And so they did have people, you know, um, when royalty would have to consummate the marriage, they would have people stand in there to observe and confirm that the marriage was consummated. So you could also have ceremonies mm-hmm. where you have people observe this passing right there. Um, so it could be in some cases a pu- very public thing at a banquet table, but also could be an observed in feast these chambers. Yeah. yeah and yeah. the feasting. But I like the idea of that's how it's passed along. Um, the actual consumption of the live that is person. R- r- like absolutely rancid. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and like, you know, with consumption of humans comes all sorts of neurological uh, and parasitic diseases. Yes, definitely. Actually. Bad cow, mm-hmm. yes. The gods yeah. don't have nervous systems or like shit like that to worry about, but humans do. And so when we're tailoring our society to emulate these like cannibalistic creatures that we worship because they're the most powerful things on the planet, they can like take the mountains and throw them at each other. Uh, we're like destroying our own cohesiveness and ability to work together. Man, I thought mm-hmm. incestual monarchs were bad, but <laughs> <laughs> we got brain <laughs> fever monarchs. <laughs> but it's oh, passed no. along by the consumption, so it's not it's not something that is your offspring is not. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Well, offspring. your offspring are expected to consume you if they're going to inherit. Sure, but it doesn't have to be mm. passed along. So you could have it where it's it's the consumption, it's not the actual offspring. So it could That's be true. chosen That's or true. something like that. So that would keep it stronger. They might have figured that out. And then I was, you know, I don't know how detailed y'all get in terms of like, is it a viral level passing on or, you know, how information is being passed the theory of information being passed through the DNA. And so just, you know, that's that's how it's passed along, the actual consumption of the DNA. You see Walter will fall asleep if we continue talking science words. But, <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> so that answers my question, so I'm not going to go there. Um, <laughs> I didn't know how detailed y'all got. It is an interesting idea of 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 knowledge being passed on like through this. Like if humans are also in some way subject to not just like the cultural construct of – the heir consuming the monarch to become the new one. But if there's actually like some sort of knowledge that's inherited yeah, or yeah. martial prowess or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it definitely. it definitely lends more credence to the idea of cannibalism as sort of the magic system of this. Exactly. Oh yeah. World. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe gods kind of saw that humans were doing this and maybe there was one God in the past who was like, okay, I can like make this. It, the gods were like, it makes sense that humans would want to do this. Uh, what if the so- god of humanity was consumed and then that changed us too? A little uh, bit. The god yeah, of humanity now- was consumed by the god of monsters. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's not get too uh. into the weeds about uh, who begat who. And- <laughs> we can keep on going back and forth and expand. I think it would be of- fun if like yeah. uh, oh, it yeah. extends, you know, to common folks sometimes too, like in times of war. Uh you could win a big battle, and instead of releasing soldiers to the enemy, you could be like, sorry, we ate all of them. <laughs> like as an own. Oh. Uh, <laughs> as an own. Oh my God. <laughs> it's awful. G- cannibalistic genocide as an own. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> you, you, you would want to have like a really strict control over like privileged knowledge because if yeah. you let someone go – then they it, you wouldn't need to torture someone for information. You would just have like a trained, uh, like <laughs> a trained chef prepare the yeah, person yeah, oh, you know, so that what, they could uh, be consumed. It's kind of like you what consume, if there were yeah. laws against mm-hmm. certain people consuming people? Kind of like how in Japan mm-hmm. only the samurai were allowed to wear swords as a symbol of right. status. 
Or yes. how only nobility can wear purple. It could be blasphemous for a person of low rank to consume a person of like higher rank or station. Than yeah, them. yeah, you have to have a training and understanding. And then, yeah, because you'd have a whole class that would prepare the meat and then consumption. Mm-hmm. The meat. Yeah. Even though there's a god who actually did that uh, yeah. in recent history. And that's an issue a lot of, you know, old stuffy types have with him, too, is that he rose above his station. So would you just get really morbid with this? You'd have like uh, some uh, societies raising, um, you know, their, you know, certain individuals and keep them in crates for the entire life just so they can be consumed to pass on. Yeah. These th- these things. So they're just, you know, if they're rows and rows. Yeah, if they're like and, gifted in a specific yeah. trait, they're picked out. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, gruesome. No. And then they're just, you know, they're fed, force fed, everything like that, but it eventually consumed at this mm-hmm. great uh, feast. <laughs> This is disturbing. <laughs> if if, if Belvin awesome. were here, this would be when, when veganism would come into the conversation. Oh, but if Belvin were here, there'd be a lot more talk about the concept well, of the wheel. Let's just do and this. we wouldn't get into the nitty gritty of eating people <laughs> like we're supposed to on this podcast. Well, since he's a vegan, let's like really build this up so when he does have to see this, that he has to face this. So we put as oh, much no. consumption of meat as possible. He's actually not vegan, is he? No, he's. I think he's vegetarian. Yeah, Chessman yeah, is I'm vegan. vegan. Yeah. I just assume he's green. I'm vegan. He yeah. is the vegetarian oh, okay, uh, okay. traitor. But Belvin um, is the one that forces environmental <laughs> issues into our thing. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> they they that, creep yeah. in somehow. <laughs> so, so when you're building this and putting it, you know, uh, into this world, do you get? Do you also get to the specific? Like, there's a monk that you, we we focus on to like try to bring the story out that and then expand on that. Yeah. Sometimes Sometimes we do. Okay. We could do that for the last, what do we got? Like five minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. I so have absolutely like, no idea. Like in a yeah, tower or something like that. He under, you know, mm-hmm. comes in and understand or goes into a cave and, you know, gets that enlightenment. Yeah. yeah. What if there was someone who mm-hmm. had a meditative epiphany? He's like, yeah. holy shit. We need to stop eating people like right now. <laughs> we oh. Well, that's the guy it's that really I don't bad like. For us. He's suggesting yeah. that we stop eating the people. That would bring right. that would bring it into the cycle, and so that's his big the bad vibes. Yeah, like, his we, name we should stop doing this. And it was Jesu Christi, <laughs> Jesu Christo. Well, that would bring an end to this whole cycle. Is like someone says, we're not going to consume, you know, this human flesh anymore, but you know, that would bring an end to this whole cycle with the gods. He He's like the Martin Luther of the, um, <laughs> of this setting. He, he's weird. out there like, you know, I have some opinions on how we've been doing things. Well, that, that is sort of what's interesting, right? Is not, this isn't something that's spearheaded by a leader, really. Not like a civic or military right. leader, yeah. but just somebody who had this idea and is basically spreading it illegally through the underclasses, And maybe through certain religious groups that are sympathetic because they're not happy that their god was consumed. Oh, yeah. That'd be a huge contingent. Um, Yeah, yeah. uh, Sort of of like Jesus. (laughs) I said his name was Jesu Christi. I don't know who Jesus is. He was just a simple carpenter. (laughs) He was a stonemason. You have to let him into your life, Daniel. <laughs> and he was born in a, a barn. It was, said that, it was said that Daniel would deny him three times on this podcast. Look, and you can't bring up a, you can have an episode about cannibalism and religion and not get to the sacrament. <laughs> Doesn't work. Yeah. Wait, wait, so the forgotten yeah. oh, has man. not been um, really, really uh, no, brought, we, in, brought in as much as it should. I think actually uh, it kind of – because we talked about how when it got – so many gods have been consumed that there's a lot of old laws on the books that have to be enforced technically by treaty. But also uh, when you consume enough people, you get a neurodegenerative brain disease that makes you forget. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> that's for you. No, that's <laughs> – what a oh, cute and, little yeah, bow. Yeah, consider all these. That's the – yeah, a little <laughs> – okay. That and, type. and think of all these <laughs> – gods and practices that have been forgotten like if if okay. one god consumes another god consumes another god consume and like the the whole chain everyone forgets about all the gods that were that work down the chain it just turns into one god okay. and everyone's like yeah can you imagine like a small like podunk town too because the rules would bleed down to like religious law impacts humanity too it's like some guy he's like 
Did you know, I just read the holy book here. If I consume a whole donkey, I get to be on town council. And they're like, there's no way. That's- no one would do that. That's silly. Their tablets are discovered inside of a cave that yeah, reveal things like Yeah, it's like the like Book of Mormon. He's like- forgotten. Yeah, exactly. Golden plates oh, being man. found every day. You just have to put on this uh, golden... Uh, Headband and yeah, okay. Actually, that's. Oh, I thought you were going to say golden underwear. I was, but I was trying to change it. Um, (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) but I do like that idea. Podcast is ninety percent Mormon. Yeah, Uh, but (laughs) I like the idea of discovering you know these old tablets that like have been forgot. You know, have all these things. Yeah, you have to trace the lineage back. It's like this god's Mm -hmm. dead, but who ate him? Yeah, and whose rules are these now? Technically, they have to fall. Yeah, yeah. uh, So there's a whole archaeological component. Oh, this is a really fun one. Uh, Junius, you want to tie it off with a bow here? I thought you just did with Forgotten. How do I tie it off with a bow? I don't know. Anything else you want to add on the setting? We do have a tradition of Don't tell them about the tradition. No, I'm going to <laughs> tell them about tell the tradition of introducing a twist at the end that completely ruins the setting. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the, that just like ruins the the entire the entire idea. Like no, no, yeah, like so, ruins everyone's enjoyment of it. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, so the, this you know is all a dream of a three year old boy. No, no, a teenage boy that oh, is the Stephen King approach. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's like King he's King. like in he's sleeping and uh, this is a wet dream of a teenage boy yeah. oh, in okay. the middle of Kansas. And I wonder what he sees in there. <laughs> it all disappears when he ejaculates. Is that, that that's how it goes? Oh my god! What <laughs> to be directed okay. by Christopher Nolan? <laughs> this is great. That would be Bravo. Christopher oh, Nolan god. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Julius P. Wright the third, ladies and gentlemen, oh a God, treasure to have on the podcast. This uh, is a lot of fun. That's our show. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us in your podcasting service of choice to get new episodes every other weekend. If you want, go ahead and write us a review on iTunes and share us with anyone who likes world building. It's a big help for us. Our art is courtesy of the talented and wonderful Shell Tor at Jovial Paradox on Twitter. You can tweet at us too at Lore Lads or send us spirited hate mail at 30minuteworlds at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and as always, happy world building. You know, when he said ruin it, we didn't mean ruining it that. (laughs) Oh, man, you (laughs) cranked it to the left. You asked me to do that. Uh,